Welcome to Autodesk Maya. In this tutorial we're going to basically learn how to load our textures into our scene. So in the previous tutorial we actually did a UV map for this uh, object here and if we go to shaded solid and then go to texture mode you can kind of see the textures that are applied here. So let's figure out how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material in the hypershade. Click on the hypershade to open up. I have a little hot key there to open it up in my um, my shelf but it's under the windows menu go down to uh, rendering editors and there it is the hypershade click on that so in the hypershade here I brought it over big window here we're basically gonna click on Arnold shader so all at the bottom here and we're gonna choose this AI standard click on that uh, the AI standards are great for uh, the Arnold renderer and now what we need to do is apply it to some object in our scene so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this cube here just as a demonstration move it out of the scene a little bit easier to see and actually let's scale it up a little bit just make it easier to see there it is okay so I'm going to right click in order to, to add that material to that cube I have the AI standard here I just hover over it and right click and assign material selection that's one way you can also middle click and drag it into the scene but typically you're not quite sure if you you know drag it directly on the object and then I'm going to double click on the AI standard to open it up in the attribute editor I'm going to close this out and in here I'm going to collapse this little guy here drag this down so there's lots of properties of the AI standard the main one's color here you can see as I drag it uh, and oh interesting so perhaps I don't have this set up the correct way. No, why it says AI standard, huh? Oh, I know why. Because we have texture mode. If we go to shaded solid, we'll actually see the color change. Okay. So uh, what we're gonna do instead of using a color is to use a texture. So remember before you can click on these, change whatever color you want. To add a texture file, you click this little little checkerboard item here, and then that will lead you to the files menu. Now, um, this is a default document scene. I want to share with you how the structure, the file structure is, because this is really important actually. Click on your documents, uh, double click on Maya, double click on projects. If you created a project, you would go into that particular project. I have just a default project here that I'm working in. So I'm going to double click in there. And then down here is source images. Double click in here. Here's what you want to put your textures, so any textures you create or find off the internet. So for example, if I go to w.textureking.com, great source for free textures, uh, all kinds of really cool textures to find on here. I can click on uh, metals, find one that I like here. Let's see, click on next. Kind of like these weird staining ones, even though this is kind of strange to see, but we'll go ahead and click on one of these. <laughs> so uh, they're funky colors, but I'm going to go ahead and download it. Right click, save image as. And so what I would do is locate that folder. So then documents, Maya, projects, default, and go down to source images and save it in there. I already have another texture. So go back to Maya here. So in that color node, I can click in here, and a file menu will open up. It opens up my other monitor, and basically I can click on the file option here, and then it automatically pops out. This is a bizarre thing with Maya. So uh, it is in here. You can see here there's a folder icon. Uh, there's a filter type here that I typically turn off. Uh, it adds some softening to the texture. I just prefer to turn that off. But click on the little folder icon here, and another window pops open. And this is where you can find your, your images. Again, by default, it should send you to the source images of whatever project you have. Well, mine is called a default project. So now I can click on these textures and find the one I like. This is the one I just downloaded. So go ahead and click open that one. And there it is. Now, there is a place node that happens to go along with it. Uh, if this is tiled, you can actually, in the repeat UV, you can 
you can increase this amount. Let's see what it looks like in the viewfinder here first by hitting the uh, 5 key and then 6 to go to, to textured mode. Here you can see it, uh, which looks okay. But if I did want to repeat it, you could type in a number like 2 and then 2. And you can see now that this is indeed not a tiled texture because of the edges there. If it was tiled, it would be very seamless there. But that's one way to increase the resolution of an image. It's sort of an insider cheat. So I'm going to go ahead and tile that back to 1. Uh, but overall, you know, the texture lines up pretty well. But that is just the color uh, node for the texture. If I actually render this scene here, I'll click on it. And I'm going to pause while it's rendering. So here it is. It looks pretty good as a color texture. Uh, and, you know, with the lighting and everything. But uh, typically to add even more realism, we use the thing called a bump map to add more detail. There's all kinds of different uh, uh, texture maps you can apply. Uh, you can have a spec map. Uh, there's, a, there's just a, a ton of different ones you can, you can play around with. In the actual uh, file menu, you can actually navigate using these little arrows. So I can go back to A1 standard. And in here, you'll see there's a spec area for specular. Uh, there's a reflection, there's a refraction. So each of these could potentially have individual textures applied. But right here is the bump mapping. So we're going to click that and twirl that open. And if for some reason the arrow thing didn't work for you, what you can always do is click out of your scene, click on the object, and then scroll down uh, or navigate to A1 standard again and scroll down to the bump area. And it works pretty much the same. Click on the little checker to activate and it brings up the file node editor click on the file and then it, what it immediately comes to is it doesn't give you the file navigation it gives you the bump strength here so there's different kinds of bumps you can have a uh, tangent space normals if you brought in a uh, bump map from a program like zbrush this is going to be just like a grayscale bump uh so we're just leaving a bump here uh, we're going to leave the default value, but you can literally increase or decrease this value here. I'm just going to type in 1 again and hit enter. I'm going to click on the arrow tab to navigate one way or the other and just try and find, you know, where is that bump node? And typically it is a little strange. Click on it and there it is again. So here is this uh, filter type. So I'm going to turn that off and then click on that little folder icon again to access the, the texture my little window popped up on my other display again and I just gotta find that same texture now typically you like to have this as a grayscale image but it'll still work as a color image too and you can immediately see uh, in the 3d viewer how sort of the illusion of pushed out depth is happening there essentially anything that has a lighter uh, tone is going in the darker tones are coming out or, or vice versa so uh, what's happening is you're getting this feeling of recession that's happening there. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take a render here. Before I do that, I just want to share that you can always navigate through these little arrows and, you know, again, you can click on the little bump navigation, find the place texture in here. You can actually repeat it again, the UVs. So if you need to do that, just make sure it lines up with the color node also. The one thing I, I'm very frustrated with Maya has been in the past, my, my ultimate frustration, is just how to load the textures properly into Maya. It's a little bit clunky, so just understand there's lots of little, little steps. But let's go ahead and render this again. I'm going to click the render tab. I'm going to pause while it renders here. So as you can see here in the render, the illusion is there where you get this feeling that there's added depth to the scene. It is illusion. So the bump map, basically the white areas tend to uh, extrude out from the surface, the dark areas tend to recede, and the gray is somewhere in between. So even with a color map like this, uh, there was luminosity in the map. So there was light to dark, and so it gave the illusion of some depth there. So uh, it actually looks pretty cool here. I kind of like the render. It looks kind of mossy to me. Uh, but anyways, that's sort of a basic overview of adding our uh, textures to materials. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, have patience with it. It is probably one of the more frustrating aspects of Maya is just trying to figure out you know, where to load the texture, how to find it, and so forth. 
uh, once you have discovered it and kind of you know go through the bumps of going through each step you'll you'll you know get better and better at it so just have some patience all right until next time uh take care cheers